Have you ever used Lightroom's calibration tool? If you have been watching my editing videos for a while, the answer probably is yes. Other photographers, however, might not know this tool even exists or how great it is at color grading. Even on Adobe's own website, there's only a 130 words long paragraph about this tool. And it doesn't really explain a lot. In Lightroom, we can find the calibration settings all the way down. This is kind of counterintuitive since, as far as I understand, the intended purpose of this tool is to correct any weird colors coming straight out of your camera. So basically, before applying any editing, you first want to calibrate the colors of your raw image if needed. I never use the calibration tool in that way. What I'm doing with these sliders is to make the colors of my images pop. Let me show it with this example. So here we have an image that already has been edited. I've done the basic adjustments, applied some masking and worked on the HSL and split toning settings. Right at this point is where I use the calibration options to enhance colors further. So at the very top of the menu, we do have the process version, which you can safely ignore. What this does is the process version corresponds to the version of Camera Raw in which the profile first appeared. Choose an ACR profile if you want consistent behavior with legacy photos. So basically, if you have older images that were edited in an older version, these images will still look the same, thanks to the process used back when editing them. A more recent process might handle settings a little different due to changes Adobe made to newer Lightroom version. Then we have the shadows slider. It can be super helpful to fix unwanted color casts. What it does is it changes the tint of darker parts of your image and give it a stronger magenta or green color tone. Kind of like the wild balance tint slider just for the shadows. But now comes the fun part, the red, green and blue primary sliders. These make colors look insanely good, but I don't think there's a single person out there who fully understands how these work. That's also the reason why in my videos I always tell you to just play around with these, because they don't make any sense. Have a look at the blue primary sliders. Let's assume we want to add more cyan to the blue tones. Instinctively, we would drop the blue primary hue. And as I drop it, we do get more cyan tones, but at the same time, you can see the yellow colors of the image turning more orange as well. So why is that? While the blue slider in the HSL menu really only affects the blue tones of your images, the blue primary slider in the calibration tab controls the whole blue channel which contains blue and its complementary color yellow. Take a look at this color wheel. Here we have the blue tones and on the other side we find the yellow tones. Both of these are included in the blue channel color matrix. If you now bring down the blue hue, we kind of rotate the whole matrix on the color wheel, resulting in stronger cyan tones while at the same time yellow turns more and more orange. Of course, under the surface, this whole process is a bit more complex and that's also why colors change more drastically than if we would simply bring down the blue and yellow hue in the HSL tab. Now, knowing this, you can guess the primary saturation slider behaves just as strange. If I bring it down all the way, we still can see some blue tones. At the same time, raising the saturation somehow has a much better effect than simply raising the overall saturation or vibrance sliders. So this way you can get a way more intense colors without making it look like a clown has thrown up on the image. And at this point I want to thank Reddit user Camera on Red because he explained it in such an easy to understand way. Of course, I also want to show you the whole editing process for this image. So if you want to follow along, you can find a link to download the raw file in the description of this video. We are actually working with an HDR image because of course we have some harsh highlights and some deep shadows. So we first want to merge the HDR. 
I'm going to use five images for that. We want to select all the images down below, right click on them, go to Photo Merge and choose HDR. Without changing anything, just make sure to check the Auto Align checkbox, hit the Merge button. You will then end up with an image like this. I already have applied a little bit of cropping as you can see. I took away a big chunk from the top right part of the image because that's rather uninteresting. And with that out of the way, we can start working on the basic adjustments, getting the exposure right. So let's open up the basic panel and right away let's switch the profile to Adobe Landscape for more base saturation. This profile also helps a little bit restoring some details from the darker areas of the image, so that's great. I want to start by raising the exposure and I'm going to raise it a lot. That's not a problem since we're working with an HDR file, so right around here looks great. Of course this will blow out the sky, but don't worry. What we can do here is to simply bring down the highlights until we get to a point where we can see the sun. So maybe around here. I also want to raise the shadows just a little more. Okay. And let's also add a bit of contrast. Looks much better already. I do think I need to adjust the white balance a little bit. What this means is I'm going to bring up the temperature, introducing some warmer color tones to this image, but I really don't want to overdo it. So, I want to go with something like this. Keep it subtle. Okay. And then we can also introduce some texture and some clarity to keep this image sharp and clear. And while we're down here, let's also add a little bit of vibrance. Perfect. Now the image looks much, much better already, but of course we can transform it a lot more with a bit of masking. So let's head into the masking menu. And I want to start with a simple sky selection mask. Lightroom does have some problems selecting the sky properly, but don't worry. I mainly want to affect the top part of the sky, so I want to further work on this mask anyway. I'm going to say subtract and choose a radial gradient. I'm going to pretty much subtract the brightest parts of the sky around the sun from this selection. And I also want to subtract a linear gradient for the left side because right here over the horizon we don't need that mask. And what I want to do here is to bring down the exposure, just making the top part a little darker and adding some more contrast this way. Okay, we can also bring down the highlights. This works quite nicely up here in the sky because it mainly exists of highlights, of course. So this really helps. Then let me create another linear gradient coming down from the top like this. And again, I want to use it to make the sky part darker. So let's bring down the exposure once more. I'm going to drop it quite a bit because I like this custom vignetting effect just like this. Okay. Now that we worked on the sky, I also want to work on the foreground. I'm going to use a luminance range mask and I'm going to click somewhere in here. I want to further narrow down the luminance range, so I'm going to deselect some of these deeper shadows, just like this. Let's bring up the whites. As I said, I only want to work on the foreground, so I'm going to click on those dots, choose intersect mask with, and then I'm choosing the brush. And with the brush, I'm just painting over the areas which I want to change. And that's mostly these rocks right here in the very near foreground. Here I want to bring up the contrast and I also want to add a little bit of clarity. That looks wonderful. We could even introduce some temperature, making them look a little warmer, just like this. And finally, I also want to target the forest right in the middle part. For that I'm going to use a color range mask. Let's see if this works. I'm just clicking right here in the forest. Of course, this selection is way too much, but I can use the refine slider of the color range mask to further narrow down the selection. So that's looking much better. Again, I'm going to click on those dots, choose intersect mask with and click on brush. And then once more, just brush over the area we want to change. 
right here. All right, what I want to do here is to bring down the shadows for more contrast. And I also want to increase the clarity a bit. Wonderful, this looks great. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. I think at this point we can compare it to before real quick and you can see a huge, huge difference. Of course, because we are working with an HDR file. Now let's do some color grading. I'm going to start in the color mixer and I want to go into the hue tab first. Here I want to bring down the yellow hue, which has a similar effect to the blue primary hue calibration stuff we did earlier. Just want to make the sun appear to be a little more orange-ish. So I'm going to drop it like that. And I'm going to head over into the saturation tab. I'm going to bring up the orange saturation here. And at the same time, I want, to, I want to bring down the aqua tones and the blue tones slightly. Okay, perfect. Then let's do a bit of split toning right here in the color grading tab. And I want to start with the highlights. And of course, for images like this, we want to make the highlights warmer by setting up a warm hue. And let's raise the saturation. That looks wonderful. I also want to set up a warm hue for the midtones, so let's do that. I'm going to use pretty much the same color here and slightly bring up the saturation. I really don't want to overdo the midtones, and I'm going to do the same for the shadows with a low amount of saturation, but I'm going to introduce some color contrast by using a cold hue for the shadows. So, right around here. Let's bring them up a little bit. All right, perfect. And now let's take another look at the calibration tab. So just like I have shown before, I want to bring down the blue primary hue for those cyan color tones in the sky and in this orange color tone on the sun, because I think this looks great. So let's bring down the blue hue. I also want to bring down the blue saturation. Usually I'm increasing the saturation for my images, but in this case, I think it looks better when I bring it down because after bringing it down like this, the water and the sky just look a lot better. Okay, I also want to bring up the green primary hue. Just like that. And let's see if we can raise the saturation a bit. All right, that looks great. And I want to bring down the red primary hue. Again, this helps to further improve the colors, especially on the sun, which looks so much better this way. And I'm also going to bring up the saturation a notch. Wonderful. And that's it for the color grading. I can turn off the calibration for a moment so you can see the image from before to after. Colors do look so much better thanks to the calibration tab. And again, I just want to point out how these sliders do have a different effect on your images than simply using the HSL settings of the color mixer. So I really highly recommend always playing around with these sliders. I usually do it towards the end of the editing in Lightroom, but of course, if you prefer, you can also do it in the beginning. It's totally up to you. So the last thing we want to do in the editing process is the sharpening in the detail step. So let's do that. I'm going to bring down the radius. I'm going to increase the details. I'm going to add some masking while holding down the Alt key because I only want to sharpen certain things just like you can see here. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Wonderful. And that's the final image. So let me know if you have any experience with the calibration tool. Maybe you can share some more information on it if you know how it works, would be great. And if you have any questions, let me also know in the comments. So thank you so much for watching this video and see you guys next time.